people listen to the podcast. Oh my God, the podcast is also a television show now. What? It's insane. Wow, in the first <laughs> segment, we talk about a lot. We talk about Danny Drinkwater. We talk about MLS. We talk about a whole bunch of stuff. And in the second segment, we talk to the Grant Wall. So you better say the the. <laughs> right? He's changing his legal. <laughs> <laughs> That's his government now. Uh, absolutely. Just story journalist. Great dude. Uh, been covering American soccer for a long time. And we talk about a bunch of great stories, American soccer stories that you may not know about, even some hospital trips that were a little bit interesting. All right. We talk about some itchy stuff, <laughs> that and more on this episode of The Cooligans. We on TV. Hi, I'm John Strong. I'm the large bald man who stands next to Stu Holden when you watch soccer on Fox Sports. You are listening to the Cooligans. Yeah, baby! <laughs> wow, look at this. You're screaming on television now. Why? You know, you were just screaming on a podcast for, for years. You know, I always knew I'd be screaming on television, but I thought it'd be one of those things where I'm getting led out of a courthouse with a jacket over my head. <laughs> You know what I mean? This is. Why would you scream, though? Because you're going to be attracting attention to yourself. Because I didn't put the coat over my head. I'm like, guys, look, I'm on TV. It's not for good reasons, but I'm here. You, you know? know what? Hey, comedy bookers, it's a credit. <laughs> okay. You might have seen this guy on NBC News, you know? Um, hello, everyone. This is wild. Okay, this so. Is, look at us. Uh, We're on Fubo Sports Network. Okay. We christened the network. Okay. You know, we, we broke a champagne bottle in the back. They're not happy about it. They're quite upset. We actually damaged it's quite a few thousand dollars of equipment. Yeah. Turns out you're not supposed to do it on a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I'm trying to I, don't let don't deny me my opportunity to celebrate. Right. I said I wanted a Christian the uh, the network. <laughs> they didn't allow that. You know. <laughs> uh, so no, th this is incredible. We're excited to be here on uh, on Fubo on the Fubo Sports Network. Uh, right, uh, uh, this is like uh, a new th a whole new platform, a new uh, you know a new adventure. I think for us for for them. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the thing like you couldn't put us in a network that already existed yo nah you gotta build one around yeah, us, because you know I mean? yeah, sure because the, the standards and practices allow. <laughs> yeah. i mean there's all these fcc rules <laughs> that honestly i just feel constricting you know what i mean like yo let me out dog <laughs> no man but this is uh an incredible opportunity and we 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 always say we can't we wouldn't have gotten here without if it wasn't for us i mean we've done everything forever. ourselves you know what i mean shouts to took, us took the words out of my mouth <laughs> <laughs> So, look. Uh, We're the only ones who believed in us, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, so, uh, so people who do not know, we've been doing, uh, we're both stand-up comedians. Ho hello, my name is Christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerrero. Right? Uh, and we always say on our podcast, this is we are the, the funniest soccer podcast that you've ever listened to. And now we're the funniest soccer television show you've ever watched. Okay. All right. And not just that. Just so happens that we the gulliest sprat. That's right. So that's a that's another thing that you're gonna have to learn. Yeah, we're gonna uh, we got a couple code words. All right, because you know what I mean. There's gonna be a couple new listeners. They're gonna yeah. be like, okay, I I've been tuning in for four minutes. Yeah. These guys are idiots. Okay, uh, yeah, no, of course. <laughs> yeah. But also get a notebook, okay? Because there's gonna be a whole new vernacular. Exactly. Okay? So we're trying to change the the American soccer landscape and what it kind of looks like, right? I mean, literally what it yeah. sort of looks like, but also what it sounds like. And you know, we we're dropping a couple my guys in there. You know, yeah. just to just to add a little flavor. Get ass a little bit. Exactly. You know? You're gonna hear a couple coño. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Pero, you know, just a lot of. That's it. We're all gonna right. Latinize it a little bit. You know what I mean? Is that why? <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna what's, sazon. What's he dropping? Sazon on that? bay. You know. <laughs> uh, we're gonna just sprinkle a little flavor in there. <laughs> that's it. So that's why Does American soccer be mad white is a lot of saltine. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm trying. We're trying to get a little paloma in there. A little paloma cracker. Uh, uh, you know what? I think saltines are delicious. Yeah, you know? a little Maria. A little <laughs> you know, Maria cracker. Honestly, right I find saltines to be a little spicy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yo, <laughs> raisins. Uh, <laughs> yo, who put pepper in this milk? Oh, it's whole milk? You know? We try to switch it up a little bit. Okay, and so if you guys don't know who we are, okay, we're, we're stand-up comedians in New York City. Professional stand-up comedians. Like, you you know to, what I mean? It's weird that you have to like preface it with that. You do, nowadays. because mad people be like, I'm a comedian. You know what and I mean? They, like, got, they got a Vine account. You right? know? Yeah, they, they Yo, like, been shut down for weeks, man. You can't keep calling yourself that. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, they, they walk up with a puppet, and we're like, no, we don't co-sign that. You know wow, what I mean? What are you going to tell Jeff Dunham? You going to tell Jeff Dunham to his face? Like to his face, <laughs> To dog. his puppet face. I'll say it first to the puppet just to gauge the reaction. <laughs> to, the, to the skeleton. That... Remember when we told people this was a soccer show? 
<laughs> we haven't. I talked. swear it'll get there. We're wearing soccer jerseys, right? Oh, uh, we're wearing custom jerseys. That and we got, we, and we got. Yes, we got to give a, a shout out. So these uh, particular jerseys that we got, we got these at MLS All Star while we were in Orlando just a couple uh, weeks ago. Yeah, a gift from Ivan and King Zo. That's right. So Ivan and King Zo are, uh, if you if you don't really follow MLS, which is you know a lot of uh, a lot of you this. You will show, now. Uh, you will now because you're gonna we're just here. find it more entertaining yeah. and you're gonna have a lot more fun with it. But they were at, uh, I believe, last year or was it two years yeah, ago? Yeah, it was last year. They were at Orlando City game. Uh, the camera against, goes to them. Against the New York Red Bulls. I remember right. that game. Right? And uh, the camera goes to them. And, and all of a sudden, they had platanos, which if you know anything about Dominican slash Latin culture, platano, that's amazing, right? Sh sure, yes. They pull it out, but it was tethered to each other. They each had one of their ears. And all of a sudden, they pulled the antennas out of it. And the world... The world went nuts. You know what I mean? <laughs> Specifically us. Yeah. We lost our minds. Platano phones. They not only made us ones, but in Orlando, they gave us this gift of this jersey. Mine has the Cuban coat of arms on it. You have the Dominican coat of arms. I'm Cuban. He's Dominican. Yep. It's got like a little phrase on it. Our name's on the back. They gave me a 14 That's for right. Thierry Henry. The, the Padre de la Patria on there, right? What does mine say? What is your Padre al Muerte. Yeah, so this is uh, the, the, this has like the founding fathers of you know? uh, a Dominican Republic. And mine just has a catchphrase that your mother yells at you uh, <laughs> for not cleaning your room, which is the most Cuban thing possible. <laughs> so just shouts to those guys for giving us this, and we wanted to wear this on our first ever episode. Yeah, we told them when they gave it to us, and we were like... Uh, we'll say, we'll wear it first because we don't know when we get fired. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's going to happen, it, so let's just it, get it out of the way It might not be another opportunity to <laughs> yeah. actually wear them, so yeah. <laughs> we have to make sure we capitalize. Uh, but... But no, but we have to also uh, thank Fubo. Look, we have a set. They gave us a set. A set. Okay. And I was like, yo, I'm always rent my set. And they were like, no, no, no. It's like a studio. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and look, and we, we are trying to dress it up as much as possible. We got to give a shout out to everyone throughout our, our years of doing our show. And we know this isn't everybody. We're going to get more and more scarves as we go along. Yes. Uh, and we, we represent we, everyone. Bug Eaters, of course, who put our logo on their jersey. Exactly. Shouts to everybody. And also shouts to our fans, right? If you show us love, we show you love back. And uh, people be leaving us five star reviews, baby. We're at five seventy on our way to six hundred. That's right. It's, it's, this is uh, hopefully a TV show will help us uh, improve our iTunes podcast rating. Okay. <laughs> you know we're going reverse here. <laughs> oh, you want to give us money? Cool. I could use this to try to make money. You know what I mean? <laughs> So just shouts to everyone who's given us a five-star review. I like this one from Dave Lowe. Uh, Pizza and Soccer is the title. It says, these guys are great. Info and comedy. Always a beat, fun, and informative. Shouts to these guys. I don't know where they got the info from. We promised no information on the show. Must be a mistake. You okay. know, clearly you were listening to somebody else. <laughs> this is very much going to be a, a comedy show. There will be some soccer. Zero facts. Zero facts. Tons of fart jokes. <laughs> yeah, yo, All right. zero details. <laughs> We're not even going to get into the, the, the rigmarole, okay? We're not going to get any of that. Okay, we are here to very much have a good time. So we appreciate that you are joining us in, in this experience, this this Cooligans experience now on television. It's going to be something dope. I mean, we're, I'm, I'm incredibly thrilled. So we have a, a, a lot to be a lot to look forward to. We have to. so much to talk about, which is amazing. We're just going to continue to talk about soccer and make it funny forever, baby. Come on. All right, so we got to start by talking about some, well, I guess some more, some more drama. Oh, you know we love when tea gets spilled. Oh, exactly. Tea. This, in this case, it's hot tea. You <laughs> okay. know what I mean? And look, and we, <laughs> and we always say, well, look, we have to, uh, we, we, we stand for American soccer. Of course. Oh, when, so, when, when something intriguing, something got to bubble up. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> when something intriguing happened, at least interesting, we have to uh, yeah, talk discuss it. it. So we're gonna start. And I know people are thinking like, oh, maybe they're gonna break down a formation of a game. No, son. What? Never. Formation. We don't even know what that is, my okay. guy. Yeah, I like that Beyonce yeah. album. <laughs> yeah, when I hear Formation, <laughs> everybody better be getting in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, uh, but we have to talk about Danny Drinkwater. So, mm -hmm. Danny, if you remember, Danny, speaking of, all right. Doing it. <laughs> Danny Drinkwater, uh, Chelsea player, loaned to Burnley. Right. Uh, he won the he won the uh, Premier League yep. with uh, Leicester City. Exactly. He was. Uh, that's where we first heard. Uh, the name, the name, yeah. And, and, and we're like, why has he got his nickname on the back of his jersey? <laughs> all the and all the jokes came up, and it was yeah. just a, the the standard, uh, you know, British name, of course, thing of just like uh, Houndstooth, like yeah. Tony yeah. Houndstooth or whatever. It was like <laughs> they named you whatever you had in your hand, you know, <laughs> like three hundred years ago. <laughs> so Danny Drogba, great player, especially when when he was at, at Leicester, and uh, and then move and the move to Chelsea was just like, okay, I guess is he better yeah. than before? Well, they pay like thirty. 
35 or 37 million for him. Like, is he that good? All right. No, turns <laughs> out they loaned his ass. Oh, they loaned him. I mean, but Chelsea loans everybody. That's not, yeah. uh, that's not usually youth players. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> so, but Danny Drinkwater uh, was uh, recently, he po- there was a photo posted of it. I don't know if he posted it originally, but uh, if him be- he got he beaten up. up. Yeah. He got yeah. he got done up. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. He got duffed a couple times. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, a little a little something more than a mush. Yeah, yeah. Know, a couple little... fuacatas. <laughs> couple of fuacatas for all the Latinos out there. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Several fuacatas. It was a fuacata fest. Was he out late? Did his mom find out and go out to the club? Yeah. Took twenty dollars out of her purse. You get a couple fuacatas. Hey man, that's we didn't make the rules. No, no, we we follow them though. But he goes out. He gets beat up by. six people and nobody knows what happened right he puts yeah. up a photo of his face all lumped up and cut up mm-hmm. turns out he was trying to take the girl of another player a guy who plays for Scunthorpe. Scunthorpe, i mean you which know is the name of a town by the way Scunthorpe. Sure, i've heard that name before yeah 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 I, but I, pleasantville was taken <laughs> you went Scunthorpe. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like a curse in six different languages <laughs> I don't even think I'm allowed to say that on air, to be honest with you. I'm no, sorry. Apologies for the constant bleeps that we just had yeah. to make. Uh, what would you call my mom? <laughs> uh, no, but this is, it's unfortunate, right? You obviously you don't want to see any uh, anyone get beaten up. And and uh, to me, this is uh, a stupid reason, right? Whatever, like, you know, just ar- was, argue with the man. Write him a sternly worded letter to yeah, not yeah. Take, take your girlfriend. Or Yo, like so he was with a girl from uh, Scunthorpe United play. But it turns out these six guys were Scunthorpe fans, I think. Okay. But they were they tried to break his legs. That's where it gets a little messed up. Yeah, then that's... They were stomping on his legs, yelling, break his legs. We're like, all right, easy. Okay, all right. <laughs> I get, like, you're trying to make a point. Yeah, but don't yeah. Injure the, don't, don't injure this man. So, that's his point, livelihood. That's, it's his livelihood, okay? I, you know, he's not... He can't just drink water all day and yeah, make no, money. No, that's no. not... <laughs> Again, how did that become your name? I mean, no one's named Drink Beer. You know what I mean? There, there was, he was the weird one. His great grandfather, he was the one drinking water. They're like, we got to name him that. Ain't nobody else doing that. <laughs> Mixing it up. Okay. You know, drink ale? You're not going to find that. But th- this is my uh, issue with uh, a lot of these things. Remember, um, uh, Jordan Pickford had this uh, thing. He got into a, a, a bit of a, a scuff with. Uh, also drunk, right? He was like wild drunk. Yeah, and this is a thing where. <laughs> yes, <laughs> got a giggle. From the camera operator. <laughs> yeah, we got camera operator. Yeah, shout laugh. out to the camera operator. Not even a smile. Lisa. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. We got yeah. well, at least we have someone to talk to. Yeah, right? <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> We're usually in an empty room. Yeah. Uh, so the but, but this is a, a common thing where you know they tell athletes, especially uh, uh, footballers in Europe, like you can't be out at night. Like you just you can just go to like those fancy places that's just for you guys, like your Soho house. Oh, okay. You know, why are you at the China White Club? You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't go to a club nicknamed after cocaine. You know what I mean? <laughs> it just is not for you anymore, man. Yeah, you're definitely past your time. But you, yeah. you're going to be hanging out with 22-year-olds yeah, all day. You, you don't see me and Christian partying at Perico nightclub. <laughs> it's not happening. Uh, I Someone's mean, Googling Perico right now. Uh, but this is a, a common thing, and, and th- th- it's an interesting thing, and we talk about it because uh, American soccer players don't really have to d- deal with this. No, they, could, they get they scuffed can, up and nobody even notices. They, 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 <laughs> they can get into knife fights <laughs> yeah. At a, Popeye, the game. at a Popeye's chicken shop, bro. <laughs> and nobody would be like, yeah. oh, yo, who's that dude? That dude's yeah. being weird. He must really want a chicken sandwich. They're like, wow, so professional chicken fighter <laughs> also plays soccer in America? That, that, there's a certain level of an, uh, anonymity yeah. that American soccer players have. That It is pretty crazy. Like, when we first started doing our show and, and when we would, like, go to events or, like, you, you would... You couldn't even like we would, remember when we spoke to Miguel Ibarra and he was uh, of Minnesota United, and he was talking about when he played in, in Liga MX and he would walk out like he just walked outside of the hotel and he was bombarded. He was just bombarded with human beings and yeah. and, 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 and everyone's like, "What are you crazy? We don't go like, outside anymore." Like you don't <laughs> daylight. Yeah, that's not for Dun- you, my guy. Dusk. You're done. Yeah. <laughs> you don't go outside. Yeah. But American soccer players can just live yeah. just totally. They can go wherever they want. And Absolutely. for the most part, nobody's going to bother them. Right. Uh, so, so you're not going to get scuffed up at a club. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. For the most Unless you're trying to take some dude's girl. Exactly. And that's when, look, and this is a just. And the a, guy's like, no, don't hurt me. I play professional soccer in America. They're like, don't lie to me. <laughs> you're trying to take my girl. And now you're making up fantasy career? <laughs> no one has this job. Come on. <laughs> it's sort of like when. We, and I bet he's a juggler. <laughs> <laughs> huh? When we tell people we're uh, comedians and it's like, no, 
seriously, wh- where uh, do you walk dogs? Yeah, you yeah. Know? <laughs> oh, you're, a, you're a comedian. I said, get me a coffee. <laughs> I'm not your waiter, dude. <laughs> so, look, I'm fortunate. You don't want, you don't want to see it. I hope he recovers. I hope and, he's fine. And he's yeah. okay uh, because he's a, he's a, you know, he's a proper footballer. He's a, yeah. I'm sure he's a good dude in the locker room or whatever. Yeah. But he's not outside of the locker room. <laughs> he's like, wait, show me that photo on your phone again. No, no, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who's fo- who's Sort of to blame, to and, and, like, Danny. did he know? Did he know that? Yes, this was of course. The fans told him that that's the other player's girl, and he said, "Well, she's coming home with me." Well, okay, <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Maybe to the hospital she'll go. You know, now that we, uh, I look over all the facts. Or whatever, <laughs> just, no, my man was way out of line. Well, maybe he was had it, was drinking a little, a little too much yeah. uh, of that of the clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was uh, Danny drink tequila. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Look, don't stay out late. I wish don't it was get- an American player named Charlie Chug Whiskey. You know what I mean? That's our, that's our Danny Drinkwater, baby. <laughs> just, I just want to see that name on a jersey, mm-hmm. man. Ch- Charlie Chug, the full name. Hey. Too. <laughs> yeah, Charles, the whole thing. Please say the, please say the whole name. <laughs> that's a, my full government. <laughs> <laughs> Put it all out there. My number is my social. I don't give a damn. I'm gonna die before I'm thirty. <laughs> Charlie Chug Whiskey, baby. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're idiots. <laughs> hey, we're gonna a lot of apologies. Yeah, it's gonna happen a lot. I mean, look at us, huh? We're sitting here, we're talking about European soccer, but also America has a soccer league and it keeps expanding. Okay, that's right. Just like me, okay? <laughs> Which I get that TV money, baby. Go right back to being fat, Alexis. I know some of you are like, wait a minute, what do you mean back to it? You should have seen me before, you know? <laughs> okay, uh, it's been quite a journey in the, in yeah. the, in the, since we've been doing our show, uh, you, you've lost how much weight? Now I'm like 58 pounds. You've lost 58. 50, yeah, I weigh 58. You didn't go down to 58 pounds because I'm a bad bitch (laughs) right now. No, I've lost like, yeah, 56, 58 pounds. Well, congratulations, friend. I mean, it was all all in preparation for this television show. Yeah, dude. I mean, I was just like, yeah, I'll try heroin. And here I am. No, I'm joking. Uh, (laughs) Turns out intermittent fasting works. Shouts to my cardio. (laughs) Get off my back. Okay. Uh, Well, congratulations. Yeah. yeah, You know what? We actually, I just wanted to point out that one of our uh, camera operators, Operators, uh, Todd, who's been a great dude helping us out uh, with the show. Cuban. Guano. We have a Cuban. That was in our contract. It was, it was Alexis the man. He's like, I'm not going to do this show. Remember when we first went into the football meeting, there was like six people that were Cuban? I'm like, well, they stacked the numbers <laughs> against us. I call my agent. I'm like, ease up a bit. We're going to be fine. <laughs> uh, but this is, this is great because I'm, uh, you know, at least we'll know for sure that when any specific Cuban references that even I may not understand. Right. We'll have, we'll definitely have un, uh, un, un paisa, un hermano. Right, right. And, you know, like if the energy's low, people are like, get a Red Bull, get, go get a coffee. And somebody in the background will be like, get him a colada. And we'll be like, oh, <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. And I'm up. I don't even need it anymore. All of a sudden, I'm up. <laughs> All right. So, just, and that's, that just again, we, we just have to kind of keep informing people, especially since it's the first show. Hey, you're going to become mad Latin. All right. So, you're going to learn how to dance. You're going to learn about food. You're going to learn about salsa, not, right. the, and not, the, not the food. The, no, the we're going to talk about both, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we do both at the same time. Yeah, uh, when we get a guest then we might dance with them. You never know. <laughs> Anything can happen on this show. And uh, and pizza. Pizza's a big part of our show. You see it in our logo, it's right? In our logo, uh, baby. Over there. Uh, and, uh, and because For those of you wondering, well, what did you do to have to be 59 pounds heavier, 58 pounds heavier? <laughs> I'm a pizza expert, baby. That's I know it. everything uh, about pizza. I know more than you. What? Alexis knows pizza. I know uh, computers. Yeah, <laughs> computers. Together. Uh, together. We started a soccer podcast. <laughs> and we do comedy. Ah! All makes sense. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's get into what's going on. Uh, some some American soccer news. Yes, MLS is expanding again. Uh, we we didn't get to talk about it on our podcast last time, but St. Louis did uh, announce uh, and, and the, the, they had their official uh, reveal. That uh, they're next. They are next. Um, so with what? That makes them the 29th team. Um, in MLS? You know, I don't know what the, the number is. Nobody does. Let's just say yeah. Okay. <laughs> little sun for the camera. I, mean, I, can count, I can go counting right now. So, I mean, the, the next uh, four. Nashville. Nashville. Miami. Inter Miami and Austin. In Austin. Uh, and shout out to we have Austin Anthem out. Uh, we have the, their scarf out there, so that's dope. Um, but the uh, but so, so St. Louis is the addition, and uh, now it's rumored that Sacramento will be the next uh, announced team. Th- those are the reports. Sac uh, Town. 
Sacramento and, Republic. And we've uh, we've talked about Sacramento. This was, I think, when when was it? When Austin actually when Austin FC and I think when Inter Miami were uh, sort of announced a bit before that. Sacramento was always the team that everybody was like, oh, they're gonna be next. They're automatic, uh, yeah. especially. And we we they won um, the USL championship uh, did uh, like two three years ago, I believe. Uh, so they they have a. Uh, they have a pedigree. They have a fan base. They have a fan base. They have a history. And everybody- Massive fan base. They certainly deserve one as a, as a, as a market. Yeah, and they never got a team because like the uh, it was like something with the ownership group that it just wasn't clear. Like they, I think also at- no one knows where it is on a map. All right, like that's important. <laughs> Sacramento, Show people, California. They're pointing all over the place. <laughs> S- Sacramento is uh north, northern. No, everybody knows northern, but you don't know where. <laughs> you know what? I don't know where. It's, California kind of looks like a sock. We know it's near the ankle, right? We know <laughs> it's near the top. What, L.A.? or you? Mean, no, Sacramento's not by the ankle. It's at the top. No, because it's what like you, that. What, all right, we're not going to get into this. All right, now, I don't think you know your body parts. I mean, but do, I, <laughs> do I have to show you? <laughs> I mean, I would say I would say Sacramento is uh, at, at the calf or, uh, along, you know, along those lines. I said it's a sock, not a whole leg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, is it a no-show sock? <laughs> Why are we talking about this? <laughs> Look, it looks like a sock. Okay. Here somewhere. Oh, no. Sacramento's, yeah. It's near the heel? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Yo, none of us know where you are, dog. <laughs> we going to be landing in Redding? <laughs> <laughs> Apologies to no, Sacramento. Well close to San Francisco. I yeah, really know. yeah, oh. northern. Uh... All right, all right. Okay. 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 <laughs> all right. All right. Now you're allowed to have an MLS team now that Alexis knows where you are. Well, now we almost gave it to the wrong city. <laughs> you know? We're up here. <laughs> Turns out it's a little bit down there. Uh, but no, this is uh, good to see. And I, I and uh, because even we, I, I remember doing a show uh, with you know Turner Sparks. Of course, Turner uh, is from Sacramento, and he did. I I do a, a weekly. Show. We both, we'll we'll mention. I, I yeah. have a weekly show in Brooklyn. Come see us perform. Come see us do uh, comedy, please. Um, but. Turner Sparks did uh, my show uh, not too long ago, and he came with his family, and his dad was wearing um, Sacramento Republic hat. A Sacramento Republic that. hat, and I'm like, do you even know what that? Like, I just whenever yeah. I see a, a American soccer fan, especially like a lower league, I'm like, you don't even know what that is. Yeah, would you get that at a bargain bin? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> We're very accusatory. <laughs> but, <laughs> but he, t- they totally knew what it was. Yeah, uh, and he's he, like, how do you know what? Yeah, it is? and it was like we get into we we got into a bit of a fist fight, and then we, then <laughs> yeah. we hugged. And the we, old Turner, <laughs> the old Sparks family knife fight. Yeah. It is Sacramento. <laughs> you can't trust them. You know? Yeah, I don't think I don't even know. That's not even a stereotype. <laughs> no, it's not. I'm only. He doesn't know anything about Sacramento. I thought it was a wildly different area. <laughs> but well, it turns out that's Portland. <laughs> I was but no, up. he, uh, yeah, they were, were huge Sacramento Republic fans. And I always say this: anytime I meet uh, supporters uh, of a team, especially I, lower league, it's incredible. Lower league. Remember, I was in Ireland and some guy was wearing a Sacramento Republic jersey, and I go, "Hey, Sac Republic, I hope you get an MLS." An MLS. And he was like, no, <laughs> <I'm doing it." laughs> "He didn't know what to do." He's like, "But no, no, come back." And I was like, "I'm walking with my wife." He's like, "No, you, you." <laughs> it's great. It's a great way. That's why uh, you know his family didn't believe him when they. Yeah, came yeah. Yeah, yeah. They uh, came out of whatever church they were in, <laughs> taking pictures. Like some fat guy walked by with a New York accent and just said, "Good luck in MLS." And Take like, your medication, <laughs> Mickey. Yeah, <laughs> this is why we don't bring you anywhere, Dad. <laughs> but no, it's a. It's we always say like, especially since we've been doing our show, the um, uh, the American soccer fan base is like it's it's such a great way to connect because there's not so many of us that are following like American soccer teams, like lower league soccer teams. Yeah. So when you meet somebody, you're instant homies. Absolutely. We got to go to Sacramento. You, you'll do the flight plan. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll go to Sacramento. We'll go to squeeze in. They got a thing where like the burger, the cheese is out. It's like a skirt. It's a skirt of griddled cheese on the outside of the burger. Okay, that's how to squeeze in. So you know, get in there, that squeeze sounds, in. I mean, I'm getting. It sounds awful. I mean, no, there's so much cheese on it that it griddles and it looks like a skirt. No one else hears so much cheese that it's griddled and thinks that's bad. Well, welcome uh, to the to the Cooligans on Food Network. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, wow, we have to. Uh, on a more serious note, yeah, uh, we have to, as best we can, as we can. This is another learning moment for the fans. <laughs> like, wow, this seems like a wildly serious subject, and they seem to be giggling a lot. So we apologize now oh. for what's about to happen. Exactly right. Uh, it's difficult for us to take anything seriously, but that's the whole. That's why you listen to this. Show, yeah, right? there's right. other podcasts if you want some real serious breakdowns. That's not us. Exactly. Or television shows also. <laughs> so the uh, I wanted to talk about this because this has been a subject that has been, especially the last couple. Uh, 
uh, weeks, months has been a bit more prominent. Um, the the United Front, uh, the hashtag a United Front. If you don't know about this, this is uh, in Major League Soccer. They have a policy that is, I believe, fairly new about no political signage. Right, like e- either or. Just apolitical. Yes, Going to an MLS game is now 100% apolitical. Yes, which is, uh, in theory, a, a, a lovely sentiment and a lovely idea, but there are bad people that all try to attend games and antagonize. Uh, just Or just attack the fans on the way to the games. Yes, exactly. So uh, as a response to that, a lot of uh, fans all around the league, and, uh, and I want to specifically talk about uh, the Portland, Portland Timbers uh, because they've been getting into kind of a contentious uh, uh, you know, battle with their kind of front office, with with MLS kind of the rest of the league. Office, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's, it's getting ki- kind of complicated uh, where uh, fans, they, you know, MLS has been very clear. They're like, don't fly this flag, right? Uh, and people are flying the flag uh, because it's an anti-racist, anti-fascist, anti-Nazi symbol. So they're like, hey, this is a, a, th- which, this is a good flag to fly. Which on the core, you'd be like, Oh, you're against racism? All right, yeah, you can put that banner up. You know what exactly, I mean? Exactly, right? We're on the same page, right? Yeah, you know, like, it's like... I don't know if I can call myself anti. You know, like, what? So, no, 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 no. <laughs> Not at Thanksgiving, yeah, Grandpa. It, you know, <laughs> most people feel like it shouldn't be a gray area. Yeah. Uh, but what's happening here is that fans, uh, and this has happened uh, around the league, where, like, uh, you know, we, we talked about it before, but, like, in, in Atlanta, they, they, they flew a, uh, a flag that said, end gun violence, and fans were thrown out for having that the people filming them getting thrown out got banned for because obviously year. people are upset that why why am i getting thrown out for like a very i think positive statement right yeah uh so uh i want to talk about this in particular because portland which we know is a very lib- very liberal city right uh, very progressive very progressive but also deals with uh you know a lot of you know they, they had those like antifa fights with whatever with uh yeah you know proud boys and all that well stuff. yeah like nazis show up because it's a very progressive city so yeah. like that's them making a statement be like look where i'm at exactly. and then you get scuffles and whatnot you correct know? so y- that is the you know that's going to be the response right because the 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 culture, the society is going to be like, yo, this is happening in my in, on my block. I yeah. want to I want to show that, uh, you know, I'm against it. Right. So and, you know, Timbers Army, we all, you know, kind of feel the same way. This is I want to represent something. I want right. to represent something positive. But the league said you could wear shirts that say these things, but you can't fly, fly a flag. Because I guess it's. Thing where they don't want to televise, yeah, they yeah. Don't want the cameras and there and there it. wasn't. I, I I didn't see this personally, but I heard that um, during uh, I think a, two three weeks ago a game. Be, uh, I don't know what game it was. It was a, I think it was a Sounders game where uh, apparently footage was used from a, a prior game uh, like for the B roll, uh, so that they wouldn't show the signage and they wouldn't That's show the hilarious. Flag, which is <laughs> which is a way around showing that stuff but it is kind of absurd that they now I, look i understand what the mls's position is right they like they want to make sure they're not af- affecting anybody's bag right they want to make sure they it's, yeah, it's a sponsor driven it's a thing. sponsor they, they don't want any they like i don't want any trouble because i want to make sure here's I, my question who's against this though like is it you know what exactly I mean? well it's like if, if a sponsor's like hey i don't yeah. uh, you know i don't want those flex i'm like well, well don't work yeah. with that sponsor yeah maybe we don't need tiki torch incorporated <laughs> as a sponsor <laughs> you know well, think of the you know when they're they like, signed up know, it's just our sales might be affected when they signed up for the llc i was like <laughs> hey, hey, you know it just, it just uh, something, like the, something. the timing of it you know what i mean <laughs> it's it's a little weird, you know? <laughs> so the the reason we're talking about this in particular even though it's an ongoing issue and and, uh, and the fans are being uh very forthright they're like no we're gonna keep doing what we do and you got to respect it yeah i mean right, they have to get banned they I have mean. they have their their position and it's like the mls is uh, is trying to uh, you know punish fans and right to essentially timber's army like no she's coming home with me and MLS is like, break their legs. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're drink watering. <laughs> you know? Okay, new verb. <laughs> Do we have a graphic? Yeah. yeah. New verb. <laughs> we just, <laughs> it might be, happen throughout yeah, the Yeah, this is going to, sorry. <laughs> uh, but the reason I want to talk about this, so this, this was, um, uh, from Jamie Goldberg, uh, who writes for the Argonian, who's been on our show before. Yes, yes, she has. Uh, she's awesome. We met her at, I believe, MLS Cup uh, at, in Atlanta yeah. uh, uh, last year. But she had uh, pointed out that the, uh, the, the owner of a, a particular bar called the Cider Riot, 
who's who got attacked by uh, Proud Boys. Yeah, he, he owns a, an establishment. The bar itself. The bar itself, yeah. yeah. And they I th- they were like antagonizing him, and they went to that bar, and it's a bit. He but he's been like he's a he's a Timbers Army like OG. I just I didn't want to do it again, but I, I heard Proud Boys went to the bar, saw a table, and they said, "Break its legs." <laughs> <laughs> This is it. This is it. Guys, this is what I deal with. And now I mean and now you you have to deal with it. This is part this is your life now. It just keeps happening. <laughs> anyway. Who's letting these six dogs in? <laughs> anyway, the re- this is a serious issue, Alexis. Uh the reason I wanted to talk about it, because uh, si- the cider I'm riot. Forget your disappointment. This, the cider riot uh, owner, who is actually someone I've spoken to. Yeah. Remember when we were talking? We went to yes. Portland and we yeah, were no, no. and we were talking about possibly doing a show there, and it, it didn't just pan out. Right. But I actually spoke to this guy. Well, he's he- suing, so he's currently in a legal battle. Is he suing? Yes, he is. He's currently in a legal battle because these guys uh, messed up his bar. Oh, that's right. That's right. He's not suing, like, and not soccer related. So he's got clearly a lot of emotion, right, involved in this. Of course. He flies a uh, Antifa banner. They're using previous footage and going through it now. That's the thing. Oh. They're using old game footage, or they're using footage from that day. And someone, some staff member, I don't know if it's Portland Timber, I don't know if it's MLS, somebody... Somebody maybe in the in the disciplinary committee. Someone is reviewing old footage and now retroactively banning these people. So he's one of the members that has now been right. banned so, retroactively. So it is kind of absurd. So when- you couldn't have been there at that game. You were. At, <laughs> so, you know? Look, if if you're um, it, it, this is a, a a difficult issue. But when it comes to ethically where people want to stand, like I mean, I think it's it's fairly clear. Yeah. Right. And and but to to start banning. Uh, people, especially, uh, you know, uh, people who are such a focal point well, of so like, the you supporters. So can I ask you What do MLS need more than anything else? They need more what? People. They exactly. Need fans, they need supporters. So don't you think it's counterintuitive to start banning people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. it's pretty clear. If anything, the punishment should be now you got to come to all the games. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you fly that fly. That's what you get. Now <laughs> you got to be here every time. <laughs> every day you got to be here. Tell some neighbors, will you? You better even be at the training. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> NWSL as well, <laughs> okay. Men's national Maybe team as well. Supporting them, Thorns. <laughs> uh, look, I hope. I'm, look, I just hope this stuff gets sorted out soon because it's so frustrating uh, to see good people doing good things. The fans uh, just trying to be good people. Exactly. All right, and and trying to keep out horrible human beings. And here's the message: if you take down someone who's waving a flag that's trying to be all inclusive and supportive of people. You're sending the message that you're against that specific message. Yeah. So think about how this is sort of this is going to spiral out of control. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh. The, the and what me- are you going to do? Hire more lobbyists? <laughs> huh? What are you going to do? Is that what you're suggesting? <laughs> no. I mean, if you do, call me a lobbyist. I'll help you out. <laughs> Give me money. And there's so much happening. Even yes. Even men's national team. That's right. Soccer. You soccer seeing some changes. You heard Dan Flynn stepping down. I did hear Alexis. What a coincidence! <laughs> wow, wow, that we talked about that we were going to mention that we prepared the subject and wrote it down. Well, it- look at me trying to make it all <laughs> casual and just getting berated for it. It's just like get off my legs, it's, dude. It's the Byron Allen, Byron Allen of soccer <laughs> <Yeah>. show. <laughs> so I heard. So I heard. I, I heard your mother in law doesn't like you. That's what he used to say that. Oh, wow. Yeah. And yeah. I heard you don't actually, like cheesecake. I, actually, why'd you bring up such a dark subject? <laughs> no, the person starts crying. <laughs> so Yo, yes, Byron Allen, have us on your show. <laughs> His show is, uh, he doesn't tape any new shows. No, the show is just syndicated. It was trash anyway, <laughs> Alexis, you're gonna get us blacklisted yeah. from you the know, comedy the channel now. Byron Allen owns, owns the, the weather, weather channel. channel, dude. He made some moves. Baby. It, does he? That's, That's how we're gonna do. We're gonna own Fubo Weather Channel. <laughs> <laughs> we, tell you, we tell you the, the weather of, of local softball games. Yeah, we'll tell you the weather of whatever the hell we want. <laughs> you know, it's going to be raining in Sacramento. You're not pointing at Sacramento. <laughs> we didn't say it was going to be accurate. I... <laughs> <laughs> Did someone say Acura? You know? <laughs> anyway... American soccer. <laughs> we yes. promise. Dan Flynn, uh, did CEO of oh, you did hear of the yeah. U.S. Soccer <laughs> Federation. He uh, announced he announced a couple months ago that he was uh, going to be stepping down, but now it is uh, official. Official. Yeah, uh, he, like he a ref with a whistle. All right. <laughs>
I, just, I you know I, I laugh more. You're well, you know what I love is I that Alexis has not raised the standard for television. No. He's just like I'm gonna go. I did my hair. I'm gonna go <laughs> like what else you want? I'm gonna go beneath podcasting, <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> Guy at local basketball game. That's <laughs> but then Flint, yeah, CEO, uh, and who we uh, got to see at um, the Hall Na of Fame, the National Soccer Hall of Fame in, yeah. in Frisco, Texas, when we were there. He didn't he didn't really speak or anything. It was just in the back counting money <laughs> <laughs> the guy's he just was, <laughs> yes he was there he gave a nice speech it was a beautiful speech. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, the guy's job, primarily, he's going to be recognized outside of the corridors of U.S. soccer, primarily for making the ticket prices so expensive. <laughs> That's literally his thing. Yeah, so, well, but he is, uh, you you made the joke about counting money, but he his job is uh, um, a non, he, has, he doesn't make money, right? Like, he, he it's a non-salary job. He's a non-salary job. Yeah, I, Every job is to a soccer. Little bonuses, though. <laughs> a couple bonuses here and there. Okay, yeah, so, um, but yes, he is stepping down, and uh, people see this as uh, an opportunity for U.S. soccer to finally maybe uh, change a little bit or go in a different <laughs> direction. Well, not a, we all not, got jokes, huh? Not Alexis Guerrero. <laughs> we all got bits. But some people do feel that way um, because the the CEO of U.S. soccer is the uh, like day to day probably the probably one of the more active of of jobs. Wildly important. Yes. But it's more of a logistical job. People were mad at Dan Flynn for not, like, when he said he was stepping down, that he didn't help make more changes tactically for U.S. soccer. That's not his job. His job is legitimately to make sure we got guap. That's right. I guap. Well, <laughs> <the> library. <laughs> we need you to might have flipped the page on that notebook already. We might be on page two. We got to tell our producer to just like, <laughs> hey, baby, you got to find when we when there's a new word yeah. that hasn't been said on the show before that maybe that. I want a star burst on the screen <laughs> with that word. Just guap. Guap is now in there. Guap, G-U-A-P. Ah. <laughs> uh, but the, so now that uh, he's leaving that position, uh, people don't know exactly what's uh, kind of going to happen or yeah. if there's going to be any change. I, the rumor I'm hearing is going to be Jay Berhalter. Uh, so when people hear that, Jay Berhalter... Uh, Greg Berhalter's brother. Greg Berhalter's brother, uh, coach of the U.S. Men's National Team. Uh, people just think... All like, this sounds on the up and up. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> just shifting the pieces around. You know, if I'm CEO and I'm stepping down and Christian gets the gig, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, I'm going to... All on the up and up. He applied. <laughs> what do you want me to do? He was the best candidate. Yeah. I don't know what to tell yeah. you. Maybe I should have looked at other candidates. <laughs> I don't know. But who has the time? <laughs> right? Oh, look at all the time I'm wasting. <laughs> I'm picking somebody else when the guy's right here. <laughs> well, and also gave me the most money. We, we help. And look, and it's not like, uh, you know, this is just some evil human being. Obviously, U.S. women's national team, men's national team, the, things are getting better, at least on the women's side. So it's not to say that he, he doesn't deserve any credit for that to some degree. But uh, the, the hope is that the next person is, is a little bit more excited about changes and doing something a little bit different you know adding some diversity for you know in, in the u.s soccer coaching to something they, there needs to be some point of some leadership some clear leadership there i mean i think there is leadership but i don't think it's the leadership we want i think people forget u.s soccer is not a government function it's a it's a it's a private business no no it's a non-profit a non-profit but it's a private it's not like you know it's not like a government act, you know sure, they sure. can hire whoever they want because we know all government agencies work perfectly yeah <laughs> altruistic if i must say <laughs> altruistic guy and that baby you don't know that word either uh, i certainly don't so let me know if i use it correctly but what I, I think what the biggest issue with this is that people don't know what's coming next and i have a feeling it's going to be more of the same it's going to be well run it's going to be a well-oiled machine but it's not going to be the sort of heartfelt ceo that you expect it's going to be someone who's here specifically to make sure we got more money okay we yeah. need money to do stuff we, we have a bunch right there's a, a surplus i mean they should it, not they, really if you ask i mean they used it to hire lobbyists <laughs> <laughs> not pay the women remember they didn't hire pay yeah, the women. that was another thing on their record as yeah. well so uh, hopefully they sort all of that out. yeah maybe they will maybe they won't they probably won't all right. So speaking of U.S. soccer and things going on, we let's uh, we have to talk about the U.S. men's national team. We really have to. Yeah, we do. We have to. All right. It's what the people want, Alexis. Yeah. Because why they call it a friendly? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't seem like it. Mexico wasn't really yeah. friendly to us. Wasn't that, that amistoso? <laughs> <laughs> we have to talk about um, U.S. against Mexico in this friendly. Uh, this game was played at MetLife Stadium out in New Jersey. Uh, and uh, the U.S. did not look good, right? No. First of all, it was a Mexico home game. Okay. 
right? Stands were filled, and uh, it was a nice game for them. Right? <laughs> you know, they yeah. got to see a, three goals. They got to see a lot of excitement. You know, yes. The uh, okay, so you all saw the game, right? You're not here to get a recap on the game no. and uh, for us to depress you again. No, uh, we have to kind of just figure out what, uh, or at least try to understand, like if if. if this is the direction uh, the men's national team wants to go in, right? We saw the uh, comments from Christian Pulisic after the game, uh, and he was pretty I, – I, I, li- I like this version of Christian Pulisic where he's just like, yeah, I, put the mic at my, at my face. I'll tell yeah. you exactly how I feel. No, man, I got answers. Go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll leave my answer que- – you know, answer questions you didn't even ask. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. How did it feel out there? The first of all <laughs> – so, uh, but he did mention that uh, one thing that he did not like was that that the U.S. Uh, uh, team basically played uh, fearful of Mexico, and that it's something that he he can't tolerate. Uh, I, you know, I mean, look, Burhalter said he was uh, it's internally we're we're uh, happy with the progress we made, and everyone was like, where were we before this? <laughs> you know what I mean? Look, when you lose three 0 to your biggest rival, even if it's a friendly, that comes across bad, right? Yeah. But what he said was in the Gold Cup, they played long ball because they didn't know how to get around the press, and this time we kind of started getting around the press. What? No, I didn't see that. You see that? <laughs> I didn't see it. Maybe did they? Maybe did they show us footage from an old game? <laughs> you know what I mean? What's Dempsey doing out there? Yeah, it wasn't. No one left feeling good. I mean, you're seeing a photo of Zach Steffen right now. He ain't happy with what happened. No. Nobody's happy with what happened except for Halter and his team. And look, I'm not in the moment. I'm like, this guy needs to get fired. I'm not there yet. But like. And maybe I'm not I'm also not the guy who says like, yo, your job is to get W's and that's it. We specifically as fans wanted a system. I mean, what are we? We're not it seems like we're not there yet. Well, you it's know, not it's the system isn't Weston working. McKinney well, we like, see, you know, looks like garbage and he was supposed to be one of the prospects because he's not put in the right position. What are we doing? Yeah, it looks like the, the you know, uh, 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 Berhalter is sticking with that idea of yeah. Everybody has mentioned Played it. out the back. playing out of the back, yeah. and and we saw. The- but yo, do we got the players for his system? Like, if you're a chef and everyone's like, "Ah, right, yo, here's a bunch of chicken," you can't be like, "Ah, right, I'm gonna make steak." Ain't no steak. I mean, that's a, quite a stubborn chef. I'll be you honest. know what I mean? <laughs> you gotta make what you what, something with the ingredients you have. Sure. Also, why is Giazzi starting? <laughs> that's not my man that's going to the World Cup. That cannot be the dude that's going to the World Cup. Yo, that's when you bring in the kids. If we're right now trying to figure out. The kids were there. The kids played. So they right can't be. The game. It can't be that. Why are they watching? Why is Giazzi so, so, well, look, starting? Look, it can't be thing. every player can't be, uh, you know, a U23 player. Like, look, we know if, that. If we're just going to walk away from a 3 0 loss saying, oh, but look, we started playing out, that's essentially a development game. Let the kids play. There's zero reason to let Giazzi Zardes get a start in a game where we're like, well, we just want to see if we're good enough against the press. Let the kids get some minutes against Mexico. But There's nothing. We're not, that's not, not my man we're walking into the World yeah, Cup but with. It's not, the, the, it's not Jazzy's fault. Ju- it doesn't matter who was up front. No, it's Greg Berhalter's fault. Uh, no one. If he says, if you're Berhalter says out. Alexis, you're starting from, I'll be like, oh, this is going to be blood in the streets. Jazzy's, I'm going to play. Jazzy's already, I think, had something like six touches in the first half. That six touches that, that Josh Sargent could have had or somebody yes. else. That would have, yes, he would have bloomed into an absolutely Maybe great. he would have learned something out there. Like, <laughs> yo, we trash. You know what I mean? Like, he would have learned something. That's not what you do. You don't give it to the guy who's not going to be there for the World Cup. You've not learned anything. Gold you Cup need, happened you already. You need some, uh, some veteran leadership. And whether you agree or not, Jazzy Zardes. sideline. Jazzy Zardes is a, a veteran of the of the men's national team. And, and he provides a little bit of probably Probably uh, leadership and comfort and stability uh, t- for Greg Ballhart yeah. and probably his some get of his a teammates. Blankie, get a blankie, get a pillow. What you need stability <laughs> for, dog? You a coach of a national team? Yeah, I, I don't. I, does it really affect? Uh, does like Jazzy's artist? Is it not or, a missed wh- opportunity for somebody else to have possibly developed a little bit? No, you don't. How, no. You're the only person other, who thinks that. Other people developed, right? Other people got opportunities. Sergio Desk got uh, his first cap. All right, like he not. Might, yo, he's it not can't be. All 11 positions, it's so everybody's says, learning uh, on all, the job. He gets a cap, but he's not cap tied. He doesn't get tied. I, I understand. So what's the point? Yo, we brought in this kid who's definitely, he was already said on the way in, like, he's going on a date with a girl being like, yo, I like my ex more. That's basically what he said. He <laughs> said he wants to play for uh, Netherlands. Right? They got like six names. Holland. <laughs> Pick one. Netherlands. Right? <laughs> 
He said he wants to play for them. He's happy for the opportunities he's had at the youth level. I'm fine with him being here. Zardes is not going to be at the World Cup. There's no reason for him to be there. Yeah, we let other kids get chances. Uh, that could have been an opportunity for... And Americans don't have great forwards. We don't have a lot of depth in forwards. I, I, Why are we letting I him? just disagree with your... your it's, I think you have a very harsh uh, perspective on, uh, on how people develop, right? And it, it happens... Uh, uh, like it's like to me the U.S. Are you suggesting that minutes against our biggest rival in international game is not I'm si- I'm good just, development for a player? I'm just saying I'm fine with Jazzy Zardes starting and somebody else at another position well, getting an opportunity to start. Why does it have to be specifically Jazzy Zardes not not getting an opportunity you, to if play? If you pick another forward, that doesn't mean Zardes picks another position. That means Zardes I, isn't. I'm there. saying, but there needs to be some veteran leadership somewhere on the team in the camp, in the training sessions. He doesn't have to be in the game. It could have been worse, I, it, possibly. It we lost four 0 <laughs> lost, lost by three is bad. I'm just saying. That man was almost made a left back. Well, I mean, I, I just feel bad for Serginho Death for getting that terribly nutmeg. That's that's oh, yeah. the one play. He's 18, you, though. Bringing the kids, and he got embarrassed. I don't know how someone didn't make, like, a little meme of him getting, and then, hello, darkness, my old friend. Because <laughs> he didn't even track back. My man was just like, yo, did that happen to me right now? Dude, they got these, though, just put him in a coffin. Yeah, dude. <laughs> he wrote his name on his underwear. Like, <laughs> So, I mean, look, baby, we're almost done with our first episode. This is a little bit, just a little flavor of what it's like this is, to watch a we, Cooligans show. Exactly. I mean, we completed our first show. We didn't even get to half the subjects we wanted to get to. Uh, yo, baby, come on. They never need to know that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't let them peek behind a curtain. <laughs> but we will, uh, uh, yeah, this is, the show is always a, a fun and delightful mess. And that's, uh, that's how that's, we love it. Yeah. Uh, but look at this. Look at this. They got us a cake, baby. Ubo got us a cake. Look at that. Unreal. It's got our logo on. On it. The kind it's almost it almost looks like if you and I became a person like they mixed our skin tone together <laughs> right little caramel okay. <laughs> you know they, I like it they used the uh, what the the, the eye drop tool in Photoshop <laughs> yeah. to find the right they blended the two <laughs> little Venn diagram middle right this there. is great this is uh, thank you so much Fubo for getting us a, a cake it it almost sounds it almost seems like you want us here yeah why did you get Christian one That's rude <laughs> of you you know this I'm is, excited about it should we do the married thing and like smash our face like smash <laughs> A little bit, of, put a little bit on your nose. Yes, yeah, so little I, boop, and just make out on camera. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everyone's banging their glasses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how beautiful! Yeah. Both of you're like, yo, football sports network is really going in. <laughs> Let's do <laughs> it. <laughs> I, well, uh, I mean, come on, like uh, this is just super exciting. I want to shake your hand, buddy. We've just uh, finished our first episode on TV. Crazy. I. Uh, it's been quite a journey, and, and it's only going to get better. So thank beginning. you. So thank you for joining us. So again, That's thank it. you, Fubo, for the cake. Thank you, Fubo Sports Network. We absolutely love you guys. Thank you to everybody for watching. Thank you for all the scars, the scars, the thank third rail, jerseys, Viking Army, all that. Timbers Army. All Let's this. end how we normally end. My name is Christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerrero. And together, what are we? The cool again. A, we want to interrupt our first television show, which you're listening to. How amazing how, is that? How crazy is that? And huh? you know, the, I mean, the people that had were had a big a big hand in you guys making you know letting us have a television show. Gully Squad, <laughs> Gully Squad. I mean, look, we're we're doing a TV show, but we're still doing uh, extra content for you guys. And so right. we want to still travel. We want to give you guys some of the stuff that isn't making it on the television show or on this episode of the podcast. Uh, maybe that means a second episode. Maybe that means a couple videos and stuff like that. Um, and the reason we get to do that is Gully Squad. Exactly. That's it. So if you want to support the show you want to support the cooligans and how you've you already helped us get this far and if you know yeah. a, a lot of the, the gully squad members have uh you know they, they've basically uh what, what's they provide us with the questions they've given us support a couple of hugs you yes know? they're subsidizing it for the people who don't want to pay but okay. maybe maybe you are a person who does want to pay yeah be our bernie sanders dude. <laughs> join gully squad all you got to do is go to soccercooligans.com uh and you'll sign you'll see the little join gully squad thing right there just click on that a little form pops up um it, it means the world to us it's what gives us the opportunity to do all the other things that we uh want to do outside of just this television show and thank you so much for helping make this happen exactly and also uh, shots to our new website Look at that. Yeah, yo, check out soccercooligans.com. <laughs> we got a new- it's a little bit fly. Okay? <laughs> Looking a little cleaner. All right. Uh, we're Look- going to fix it up a little more. Little we're dapper, learning, yeah. you know. Little by little, but we'll get there. So, again, thank you uh, again. And uh, if you want to uh, support, go to soccercooligans.com and hit the Join Gully Squad button. Look at yeah, this. Baby! Come on, huh? Look at 
missed two episodes. Wow. <laughs> Didn't think we would make it, I'll be That's honest. Right. Well, we had to duct tape some of the execs to some chairs to get this one to go. You but don't what? worry about it. It just you know, it just shows ambition. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm trying, <laughs> you know. Okay, this is what all my elementary school teachers wanted you know? they wanted to see from me then. I'm trying to make my mother, I'm trying to make my wife, I'm trying to make my parole officer, all of them proud of me. You know what I mean? Okay. I really get them all in one room. Yes, I always love those uh, you know, those uh, birthday cards, your parole officer <laughs> sends you. <laughs> Really beautiful. Oh, okay, well, the person we're interviewing <laughs> thinks I have a pro officer now. Okay, and I do not. But we, what I do have is the honor of bringing this gentleman on our po- on our podcast slash television show. That's right. Right. I mean, guys, you know him. You mentioned SI. You know him from books he's written. You know him from World Cup coverage. You know him from soccer. If you follow soccer in America, you know who this person is. Yeah. You can't. You 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 can't avoid him. No, not at all. <laughs> he, sometimes you're watching something. He's not even on. He creeps up and. You know what I mean? He's in the lower third. <laughs> <He's> like, hey, <laughs> hey. Your boy's still around. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, unless you're driving. Okay. Why are you watching television if you're driving? Put your hands together for the one, the only, Grant Wall. There. Hey. Wow. It's great to be here, guys. Oh. Thank you so much Look, for having me. We shook hands. He's real. It's not CGI. <laughs> Grant, thank you so much for joining us on our first uh, show. Our first, You're the first guest on, uh, on our show. This feels historic, so thanks oh, for is. having me. This is 100% historic. <laughs> you should be honored to be on our show. I can't wait for the, the hit piece from Grant Wall about the Cooligans <laughs> yeah. coming soon. They smell exactly like you think. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. Okay. All right, Grant. I, look, a lot of people know you uh, for, for your amazing uh, soccer coverage for years. You've been covering American soccer for a long time. You're, you're, you're one of these people that I look to, like, uh, the OGs when it Can comes to— say it? I'm old. No. <laughs> no, no, not at all. We thought it. We didn't say it. No, you know what, to be honest, I can't even tell your age. I don't know no, what age you are. You could be 14 or 45. I started shaving my head in 2001. Okay. And the benefit of doing this is you never age. You they don't. did that 10 year challenge on social media earlier this year, and I posted from 10 years ago and this year, and it looked the same. Okay. Everyone's like, great. you're wearing the same shirt, even in this photo. <laughs> it's the same photo. <laughs> Other than that, yeah. But now, I know your backstory is you started covering a college team that Bob Bradley was in charge of, correct? So way back in 1992, as a freshman at Prince. Princeton, I covered Bob Bradley's team for the Daily Princetonian, the student newspaper. Okay. And uh, so Hard hitting. Bob Bob would tell you I have been asking him stupid questions for 27 years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he also said you stole his look. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, that guy is jacked these days. Have you oh, seen yeah, oh, no, how no. much time he must spend in the gym? It's incredible. It's the only way he gets the aggression out. That man hasn't <laughs> smiled since you asked him that question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, so you were uh, uh, a co- you were covering college soccer. So how uh, how look, did you transition to American soccer? I mean, it's funny because back in those days, I was covering uh, Bob's college team, and neither one of us would have predicted that 27 years later he would be doing what he's doing, having coached the U.S. in a World Cup as well. Yeah. Or that I'd be doing what I'm doing and have been doing for 23 years at Sports Illustrated. Him he sucks at coaching. If, for us. <laughs> and you know what? Though? I will say this. It's easy to joke about Bob. Like, he is an incredible individual um, and a guy who uh, really did a lot to help me sort of as a student get into soccer. He helped connect me to Boca Juniors for a college project back in the day in Argentina wow. and did a lot of things wow. not knowing that I would ever cover him or be, you know, in this position today. Um, I went to cover him uh, after you know so many years covering him in U.S. soccer when he was the Egypt coach, did a big story on yeah. Bob for Sports Illustrated. And I think that was the moment where he kind of changed. I don't know if he would admit it, but I think he became um, – almost sort of like a world citizen during those days when he was the Egypt coach going through so much in that country and getting them on the verge of qualifying for a World Cup. Um, It was really impressive, I thought. Yeah, that's why why I like uh, hearing you speak, right? Because uh, I I call you an OG, but it's also, uh, you have a lot, there must be a wealth of stories, of experiences. Just the stuff you can't tell must be amazing. (laughs) I mean, here's another example. Back in the day, a player for Bob's Princeton team was Jesse Marsh. So Jesse was in my year in college, and he and I ended up in the student infirmary for three days together when I got food poisoning. He had something, and we got to know each other really well, kind of away from the soccer field. And it's funny how early relationships that you make you then can have for many, many years later. I mean, I'm literally interviewing Jesse this week. Yeah. 
as he's about to become the first American coach in UEFA Champions League yeah. for Red Bull Salzburg. And it's pretty incredible just sort of the way that works. Yeah, I love how uh, Grant didn't break HIPAA compliance by saying what Jesse Marsh had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, if you want to know. I'll they still you all- call it the Jesse Marsh flu. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what it is. A couple of warts here and there. You know? It's fine when you're not in an outbreak. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I really love we can make Grant's these like and we got a second paragraph for the hit piece <laughs> so you you are you're you've recently written a book but you're you one of the things that stands out to me the most is the Beckham experiment thanks um uh so talk a little bit about sort of the fallout from that because as fans we got to see a lot Landon Donovan was asked a bunch of questions uh Bruce Arena was asked a bunch of questions a lot of stuff had been sort of came out because of that book uh what was it for you when you put that out did you see any backlash from that did you think that was going to affect your career moving forward I mean in the end it affected my career in a really positive way um it helped me become a full-time soccer writer because I didn't become a full-time soccer writer until 2009 when Sports Illustrated was like, oh, you can actually cover soccer full-time, not just basketball with soccer on the side like you've been doing. Um, Now, the book, the idea for it was to follow David Beckham in his first two years with the LA Galaxy. And so that's what I did. What I didn't realize was that they were going to be horrible the first two years because I thought they'd be pretty good. And eventually they were pretty good. Uh, winning championships, but I got deeper inside that Galaxy team than I've ever gotten inside any team that I've ever covered just because I was around them for so long. And in Landon in particular, but also Alexi Lawless, if you remember, was the GM of that team before yeah. he got yeah. fired. Yeah. And Rude <laughs> Hullett was the coach, and he and Alexi got fired the same day. And there was so much turmoil inside that team. And then David's be- Beckham's best friend became like the guy who ran the team. And it was just crazy. <laughs> and the thing about it was, was that because I wasn't writing that week for Sports Illustrated, A lot of my interviews with players inside the galaxy, including Donovan, were like, is this for Sports Illustrated or for your book? And because it was for the book and it wasn't going to come out for many more months, it was almost like they felt a willingness to to share more about what was really happening inside the team. Uh, which was interesting for me because it's not like that meant it was off the record. It just means it's on the record, but later. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> and when the book came out, there was a lot of attention because here you had Beckham back in the first part of 09, had been on loan with AC Milan, was trying right. to kind of get out of the galaxy. And now he's being called out by Landon Donovan and Alexi Lalas and all these American guys in this book. Uh, And it really created uh, quite a situation where Beckham, who I still don't think has read the whole book or much of it. I don't know. I think he was told not to like it. Um, I'd had a good relationship with him. I had done two cover stories on him for Sports Illustrated back in 03 and 07. Um, And he had always seemed like a pretty regular guy, all things considered. Yeah, well, Um, we got more with Grant right after this. So, I mean, clearly that was a little rough. Do you think it's going to affect anything now? I'm curious, actually, now that Miami's coming into MLS next year, will Beckham still kind of hold a grudge this many years later? But uh, one thing I've always said to his people is is that I think he's done a tremendous amount for the sport here. Um, And if he has any issues, he should have issues with the people who spoke out in the book. (laughs) Oh, yeah, nice. Like, not me. I I wrote only what they said. I do like, I think you you just won't get media passes for Miami games, that's all. <laughs> Beckham never forgets, yeah. you know? <laughs> you know, Grant Wall walks in and be like, oh, can I get a pass for Fort Lauderdale Club? If- <laughs> Is that possible? I'm actually curious because, um, you know, we haven't been in, like, this soccer space for very long, and us being comedians sometimes can rub people the wrong way. We're like... You don't I- say. <laughs> well, I think sometimes it can be like, well, are you going to mock the sport, especially American soccer? I think MLS and U.S. soccer get a little protective of... Of, of, of you know the whole kind of establishment and as a as a young journalist as a upstart you know when you were uh kind of na- trying to navigate that space i'm sure you've kind of experienced especially seeing the growth of american soccer uh and maybe some uh some more boundaries and maybe some walls and things like that how have you kind of figured out a way to be kind of like critical, critical and, yeah. uh, of, w- of what's been going on and also 
maintain the 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 access that yeah, how your, your job talk, requires. How do we talk shit and still get credit? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a great question. I guess what I would say is it's I think everyone should have a sense of humor about themselves. So if the people you're covering don't have a sense of humor about jokes, that's on them. Yeah. Um, and that's less also about criticism, I think, to humor. Like if um, if U.S. soccer makes a bad hire or deserves criticism in some way, I think the, you know, I've been doing this for over two decades. I think there's a respect that you do it in ways that don't just suggest you're trying to burn bridges every other week or this is the only way you approach You hear that, Alexis? Oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> because, That's like, just, I mean, just this week, um, you know, I, I wrote a critical column after the U.S. got destroyed by Mexico 3-0. Yep. Um, uh, wrote another pretty critical piece on U.S. soccer, and, and the CEO, Dan Flynn, is leaving next week. And I really do th- feel strongly that they need to go outside of U.S. soccer to hire his replacement because yep. U.S. soccer is, to me, this deeply conservative organization that needs some – some new blood and i really don't want to see the men's national team coach's brother become the boss of his boss i think that's kind of bad yeah yeah you know and so that's that deserves criticism and i think as long as you don't get personal about it you're gonna be fine okay yeah i mean it's uh it, it, okay you you handle that then well it's, you know what I, I would say like it's difficult i guess you know I, to s- distinguish like and separate i'm a fan today i'm a journalist tomorrow i'm a comedian we're never journalists. We're, you, know, we're, you know what i mean maybe a pundit <laughs> <laughs> We're certainly not journalists. Like we would never call ourselves that, but we do get to cover the game, you know. And we get to cover the game from this position of saying, like, well, here's what we think. And a lot of times, what we think, we're always going for the comedic angle. And I don't know that everyone always either notices that. Maybe it's our our bad not doing a good job of it. But sometimes we'll say something, and people are like, oh, that's a little mean. And we're like, well, yeah, that's it's a joke. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of no, and, and I get it. And I think like there's a lot of people coming from different approaches to covering the sport. And so I. I I like having that variety out there. I like the perspective that you guys bring because it's kind of different compared to a lot of the other discussion we see. Yeah. I, one of my things, one of my favorite things is like a people's reaction when they find out that we're comedians covering American soccer. They're like, oh, oh, okay. You know, they're like, what do you think we're going to do? Pop out of like, you know, <laughs> pop out from behind a wall during your conference? Like, yeah, I'm like, I don't know what the, the reaction's like. Oh, I don't know. And I'm like, don't you think we kind of made it? Like the sports yeah. kind of made it when comedians want to talk about it, you know? Yeah. I do think that. And I think also it's a sign of the growth, right? I mean, like we didn't see guys like you coming around in the mid 1990s because there wasn't a lot going on with Baby. Yeah. Back in the day. Yeah. They don't allow that. They don't allow toddlers walking around. Yeah. Right? Well, this kid's got bits <laughs> in his shorts. Uh, he pooped. So, but you, yeah. I was gonna say, like, but even seeing uh, uh, that that growth and, and from covering the sport. Uh, and, and for as long as you have, um, the fact that MLS is where it currently is, well, how does how does it make you feel now? What like because we I remember when we spoke to um, Kevin Payne. You know Kevin Payne? Not a comedian. Not a comedian. No. no. <laughs> Does not get the joke. Complete opposite, probably. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but Kevin Payne, he works uh, a current for U.S. club soccer, if mm-hmm. I'm not mistaken. And he, but but talking to him about like um, one uh, helping create MLS and then keeping it afloat, there is this this old guard of like, hey, we we brought it, we saved it. Yeah. You know, I don't care about all these new teams. You know, all these new fans that started following it. Like, Three- shut up, sit down, and listen to us. We've <laughs> well, been here. Well, we're like kind of. Quote him, yeah. it was, it was literally what he told us on the power show. of phrasing, but not. And, really. and he said, "Quote, get off my lot." Yeah, yeah, yeah. he basically. If we let him talk for five minutes, he, said it. he was like, "These new fans, they don't even know what they're talking about." So be, I was here in '92. You, you know? know, when when I think of you, I don't think of you as the, uh, an, like a fuddy duddy that's like a frustrated. That's good. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, no, but but you've been You're like invo- the stepdad with cool shoes. You know? <laughs> like, yeah, he kind of gets it. Yeah. Yeah. Are those Reeboks? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I okay. Got the throwback joints on, <laughs> but you've been in both worlds where you've uh, had to cover those people that were kind of more conservative about the league, and then now dealing with um, more owners that are like, "Hey, let's get rid of the salary cap. Let's really see where this can go." How does it kind of feel uh, having seen both of those sides? I mean, I got Sports Illustrated in '96, which was the first year of MLS, and so uh, I have seen it all in a sense yes. and we actually did do a really neat uh sort of oral history on the first year of mls me and brian strauss a couple of years oh, ago right. and there was if if 
those guys are like the serious types. There was all kinds of craziness that happened in, in the first <laughs> yeah. parts of MLS. Yeah. So like, remember that. But um, I never would have said it was inevitable that MLS would get to the point where it is now. You know, I, yeah. I liked I wanted to cover soccer full time, not because I thought it was going to become this huge sport in America, but because I liked it. And the fact that it's gotten to this point in America is I, I'm kind of tickled by that in a really positive way. Um, and we'll see where it goes from here. What I would say, though, is that the problem with MLS isn't the new teams. The issue that they got to deal with is the original teams yeah, yeah. and a lot of those cities like Denver, like Dallas, even Columbus still to an extent. And, you know, to this point, we've only really seen Kansas City among the original teams turn things around. Sure. And I'm from Kansas City. It was a wasteland there for a long time. Then they got new ownership, built that stadium, hired Peter Vermees and put together a championship team. Not this season, but... You know, that's a place that now soccer's a really big deal in Kansas City. MLS is a really big deal. So I'd like to see that happen with other original teams. And I think that's a bigger challenge than any of these expansion markets. Uh, you were talking about the old guard. It seems like this CBA coming up, right? They've already started preparing for it. They all posted that photo. We are MLSPA. Uh, it seems like this might be the turning point. At least the fans are hoping that this becomes a big turning point. feels like a lot of missed opportunities with the last CBA for the players. They left a lot of money on the table, right? Tam comes out all of a sudden, right? A bunch of uh, agreements <laughs> come out all of a sudden afterwards. What do you think is going to happen with this one? Do you think the fans are going to get what they want? Do you think the players are going to get what they want? I'd like to see the players get some gains. I mean, like, it really hit me, actually, in my first book back in 07, just how the rank-and-file player in MLS has to fight so much stuff. Because here you had David Beckham making $50 million a year, including endorsements, playing next to Alan Gordon, who was also a character in my book, a wonderful character, yeah, yeah. really funny guy, who was making, like, $17,000 a year at the time, had to live with two of his teammates, had to coach on the side, and you really felt what the players had to go through. And so the minimum wage has gone up since then. So that's good. Um, but it's still tough being a, a lower level MLS player. And so I'd like to see those gains being made in the minimum wage. When you compare it to other sports leagues, it's nowhere close. Um, and also, you know, I've, I've traveled with these guys on you know, on commercial flights. And I just feel badly sometimes when you have to make a connection to fly across the country to Vancouver or something and you're in a middle seat and coach and, and like I can do that because I have, I'm just writing, you know, and, and these guys actually have to go out and play a soccer game. And I just think that's really tough. Work. Okay. You're so, like, you know what? You're a rookie. Take the extra peanuts. You know, I don't even, <laughs> take my Biscoff. <laughs> you want my Biscoffs? <laughs> Hello, guys. I'm a good guy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a good guy. <laughs> so, uh, so charter flights, I guess it, that would be kind of the next. Uh, you, is that is that the thing that stands out first to you? I think free agency is more important. No? I mean, if any player will tell you that just salary is probably. Yeah. Th yeah. If that was the thing to prioritize, they would prioritize that. But they do seem to be talking more than ever before about charter flights. Yeah. They did get free agency, a li very limited free agency sure. when you're back 48. in 2015. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I was surprised actually that they gave up salary stuff for the little bit of free agency and i still wonder if that was a miscalculation at the time okay. but uh i think salary is really important we'll see about the charter flights i mean like i also remember like when the the galaxy back in 07 finally did get a charter flight alan gordon in one of my favorite quotes of all time said to the the flight attendant this is nicer than my house <laughs> and, and she was like ha 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 and he's like no i'm serious <laughs> i live here now <laughs> <laughs> this is great and also alan gordon also posts quite salacious photos you know yeah. the, the, the one of the <laughs> we, i don't know if we can show it on television uh, <laughs> well i mean it's my lock screen so if you want me to hold my phone up i will uh, <laughs> so we did we did get um a, a question so for the new view that was brandon Schechter who asked that question brandon Schechter, thank you for gully squad gully squad is uh, like our, our hardcore diehard kind of supporters there are ultras our ultras who, and they asked they had a question for you so uh so grant greg jackson asked he said uh what exactly did u.s soccer see ernie stewart do in his first year to already uh be promoted to sporting director and who was in line to replace as him as GM. Would you like us to get you some gasoline in a match <laughs> and point you towards the bridge <laughs> that you make a living on? <laughs> what Here's what I would say, and I, and I wrote this. So that, I mean, like, it's a little surprising to me because the really the public thing that we all saw Ernie Stewart do over the last year was this process to land on Greg Berhalter that took forever and ever and ever, even though he only really interviewed one and a half candidates. Yeah. And so... Who was the half? 
I mean, <laughs> I mean, Oscar Pereja, supposedly. Oh, that's right. Uh, but, you know, they didn't interview Tata Martino, who I think would have loved to have interviewed for that job. Yep. Um, and Do you really think that? Oh, yeah. What? I mean, that, that just and, and more and more now, like that gets people angry, especially given the results in the past week, but also that they've won like 11 straight with Mexico or They're something. Defeated. They're yeah. Defeated um, and so I think that's something that in any line of work, when you're interviewing someone for a job, you want to interview people. There's no punishment for interviewing people. And right. so, like, I just don't understand why they didn't have more candidates that they looked at, they being Ernie Stewart. That was yeah. his job. Um, and so that's confusing to me. Um, now, maybe inside U.S. soccer, Ernie Stewart has done these revolutionary things that caused him to get this promotion, but nobody really knows what those things are. And so I think um, from a public perspective, I think he's a little under the gun to, to see good things happen with this U.S. men's program. And now he's actually in charge of the women's side, too, with yeah, this yeah. promotion, which I know not everyone on the women's side is totally comfortable with. They're like, oh, we hired Kate Markgraf as the first U.S. women's GM on the very same day. The bigger headline was U.S. soccer promotes Ernie Stewart. And, oh, yeah, he's going to be in charge of the world champion women. And what exactly has Ernie Stewart done? Yeah. Right. Do you think that Tata's success should be the curb by which Berhalter and Ernie Stewart are graded? Because he would have had an opportunity to be the coach? I think the U.S. and Mexico have achieved enough, both teams, in the last 20 years and are close enough rivals. And there have been moments, as you guys know, when the U.S. has been better than Mexico yeah. in the last 20 years that I do think that should be part of, of how, uh, how you're judged. You're judged in, in many ways by how your rival is doing and how you're doing compared to them. And right now, uh, the U.S. isn't as good as Mexico, and it's not even that close. And when you mentioned that point about public per perception that that uh, that he was under a little bit of pressure, I kind of disagree. Do you really think that the? I, I feel like in our soccer bubble, yeah, the people can get upset, but does does U.S. soccer care about these diehard? Give a shit. I think it's a <laughs> about about <Grant? laughs> about that kind of about that perception from. From just that bubble, because it seems like there's not enough people to get angry to to force a change. I think you're underestimating a little bit how big the fandom has grown for the U.S. men's national team out there on a regular basis, not just at World Cups. Yeah. Yes, obviously, during a, a men's World Cup, you're going to have a lot more Americans following and having opinions and media and all of that stuff. But I actually think now... You know, you've got ESPN covering this team regularly. You've got Fox covering this team regularly. You've got a lot of written outlets covering this team regularly. Um, and there's a lot of feeling out there. And so I think U.S. soccer would be mistaken not to take seriously – you know, how the fan base feels. Does that mean everyone on soccer Twitter should be <laughs> someone you, you, you freak out about? No. Yes, you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> he reads every tweet and he gets angry every time. Uh, I, usually, for the, most of the time, whenever we have authors on the show, I usually like to read their book beforehand yeah. so that they... And I usually just, like, zone out. <laughs> I'm like, what? Why we have a smart people I can't, on? I can't yeah. give Alexis homework, trust me. <laughs> uh, but please, let us know a little a quick synopsis uh, about the book yeah it's about the craft of soccer position by position and i learned a ton doing this book over two so it's like years. the karma sutra of okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, uh, what position? that, that, that would have been a nice sort yeah. of jacket yeah. quote from you to have on there you yeah know? yeah oh wait till we get to the double pivot <laughs> <laughs> i hope you stretch beforehand <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, dude. <laughs> so basically, I wanted to find a goalkeeper. Uh, I got Manuel Neuer to spend time with me for two years, uh, a defender, Vincent Company, uh, a defensive midfielder, Xavi Alonso, an attacking midfielder, Christian Pulisic, a forward, Chicharito, uh, a coach, Roberto Martinez, and a director of football, Michael Zorc from Dortmund, who are like, Pretty close to world class, all of them. Yeah. Or totally world class, World yeah. Cup winners and such. Everyone except Chicharito, I think, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, really? Did you, need, did you need to do that? I mean, no, but yeah. <laughs> I love Chicharito. He's not, yeah, I, I he's actually great. just want to I had a blast. Yeah, he's, um, especially the last, um, I think la it was like a year ago or two years ago, I, w I watched a Instagram live that he did that I took 
totally changed my perception of him. Not that I had a negative one, but um, he was talking about um, like uh, misogyny and machismo in in Mexico and in in just in, in culture about how he was. It was like him and a friend and talking about how like we like telling his fans like, hey, we gotta like stop. We gotta like chill out with all this stuff because women cool. are being disrespected and stuff. And I'm like, it's cool. He's already a great player, very outspoken. And but but for him to be uh, specific about that, I was just like, oh, this this guy's a, a great dude. He's a really thoughtful guy. And the fact of the matter is, when you cover a sport for a long time, you realize 95, 98% of the athletes and coaches you cover aren't going to go into the media afterward because they're not always great at talking about in detail what it is they do or having insight about it. And so the whole point of this book was to pick people who have that ability, that rare ability to be extremely thoughtful about what they do on the field. And there's a reason why some of these guys have already worked in television, like Roberto Martinez, like Vincent Company, and any of these guys are capable of doing that, including Christian Pulisic, who I, I thought to ask sort of held his own. He kind of comes across a little bit like Messi does, like outside of the football field, the soccer, the football pitch, soccer field, he seems uncomfortable. He seems a little awkward. Uh, did you get that from him? Or is he a bit more like relaxed, a bit more maybe enigmatic than, than I think a lot of U.S. soccer fans give him he, credit for? He's a guy who is much more insightful when he's doing a one-on-one interview than when he's in a group yeah. setting. Like when he's in a group media setting, a lot of times he goes on autopilot like so many athletes yeah. do and just kind of wants to get through it and doesn't really enjoy it. But I visited him where he was living in Dortmund, and he was still a teenager at the time. But with all of these guys, we watched a ton of video together, and I got the chance to like ask him questions about like what – what were you thinking here? What were your options? Oh, I and thought like, you meant like Ariana Grande. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys into? <laughs> Grant got it all. I got Spotify. We good. <laughs> and, and Pulisic was fantastic. He held his own in a chapter with Xabi Alonso, who's one of the smartest, most accomplished players ever, basically. And it hit me that Pulisic has this photographic memory. He could remember that, like, because we had this sort of non or sequential video that we were looking at. He remembered which game it was from. He remembered the circumstances in each and really had a lot to say about what he was thinking and how he was approaching playing his position at that time. It's amazing. He has a photographic memory of every time the U.S. men's national team gave the ball away. Yeah, and- <laughs> Which he probably does. <laughs> he must be tormented by Trinidad and Tobago then. Uh, <laughs> just brutal. Just getting <laughs> carried over the water. Uh, when, when you write a book like this, what is it that you're hoping to get across to the, to the reader? What, what is it that they can expect besides like, yo, these guys really know their sport? The excitement that I had being in the room with Vincent Company at Manchester City when we're literally in the theater that the team sits in when they do scouting video stuff. And I have pictures of this, like Vincent Company's like a, a teacher up at the screen, like yeah. answering my questions and like- That was in the, the documentary, the Amazon show, the, that room, like, yeah. it was like yeah. a theater, yeah. 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 And it, that is for me just an, an incredible opportunity to, to be there and listen to what he was saying, but I wanna communicate the excitement that I was having and, and what he was sharing. And these guys ended up being so smart in their ability to talk about things that only they could have experienced and known. That's then my job as the writer to get in the book and have it be interesting and not dry like a textbook, which right. that was the whole idea. So, I mean, but for you, you this must be you must be a geek. You must be losing yeah. your mind with getting <laughs> this kind of opera. Yeah, you know, little Grant Wall doesn't envision these things happening, right? Well, what is it like? A kid asking I, Bob Bradley questions in college could not have imagined. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have imagined it, you know, and there's just some really cool moments along the way. Like, we, I had multiple interviews with each one of the people in this book, but, like, the one with Chicharito was when Osorio was still his coach, and I couldn't get Chicharito to agree to his second interview. Nice as he is, like, yeah. he doesn't do a ton of interviews. And so I go out to Denver, where the Mexican team is, and Osorio ends up arranging this hour and a half long conversation with Chicharito. And then Miguel Layun just shows up and and they have this great discussion in English, by the way, um, which I captured all of it. And it's all, you know, in the book, all the good stuff. And there, you know, Osorio has all of these like, um, you know, his whole tactical stuff that he puts out like, you know, his on the, on the table. And they actually go through all of these patterns about how they set up for particular games and how their team actually under Osorio. And this happens with some regularity have specific patterns that they run to try and get Chicharito the ball. I, I was just fascinated by the whole thing. 
Which chapter does Landon Donovan talk shit about Beckham? <laughs> We're, that's in the uh, the new afterword for the paperback. <laughs> we'll be right back. All right, well, Grant. Okay, look, now we have to talk about the Women's World Cup. You okay, were there. Right, let's do uh, it. Sorry for being so aggressive when I just said your name. You yeah, were like, oh, yo, Grant. <laughs> yo, Grant. You were... Yeah, you best be prepared. Buggy your seatbelt, my guy. All right, you don't even know what you signed up for. I... <laughs> what do you think about this photo? <laughs> uh, you were at the Women's World Cup, and I, I, I enjoyed your coverage, um, uh, especially because you, the, especially the stuff that you did on the digital side, you, um, you would make these uh, videos when you uh, kind of highlight a particular thing or a certain point um but your experience at this watching you at the women's world cup i felt um a little bit of there was like this this sympathy that you were delivering i think to the viewers where like there, there was like this understanding this is, how, this is my take yeah, yeah i have not had this conversation before i was just like i get that i am a man here and i'm going to try my best to have a, a, a nuanced and interesting take that is sensitive uh to to p- p- people's ideals or like equal pay the, all the there were so many things sort of swirling around and i felt like it was a a very genuine and sincere uh delivery and take of of, of nice. your thoughts uh, throughout the i do think tournament. the women's world cup maybe more than the men's world cup even though the men's world cup can do this too becomes this place where you do get into discussion about off the field topics and some of the things that came up during this women's world cup were things like um you know how do we talk about african soccer teams and black soccer players because you know I, it happened during this tournament, but it also happens every week around the world Pace when people power. talk about pace and power with black soccer players and sort of act as if they don't have uh, much in the way of technical skills or vision or, or what have you. And that's just obviously not possible if you're going to be I a think, player at, at a high level. The thing is, when people see me play, they don't mention my pace or power. I don't know no. why. <laughs> they do. They just say the word lack of in front of each. Real, yeah. Seems like, kind of disrespectful yeah. when they don't. <laughs> And I'm not black, but you should see when I'm at a pizza place, people are like, look at the pace. Look at the power. You know? So, like, I do kind of get it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Come, I enjoyed yeah, those, yeah, yeah. those types of things, though. And so the ability to do an off-the-cuff sort of essay video-wise at the end of each match day was, you know, sometimes I would talk about soccer. Like, here are five things I think FIFA should do for women's soccer. And interestingly, at the end of the tournament, the FIFA president announced – Basically, four and a half of my five things as his own. Okay. Uh, but yeah, like Oscar Perez has that half yet again. <laughs> <laughs> he just keeps I mean, missing out. I look, the, the U.S. soccer CEO position is vacant. We <laughs> have, okay, you so, never know. <laughs> so, I mean, that type of thing was fun for me. And, uh, and they got good engagement, you know, more than a quarter million views on some of these things. Yeah. Um, and just that ability to, to talk about politics and soccer and how I don't think you can separate politics and sports or soccer, especially. Uh, in the year 2019 and if you try I think you're just putting your head in the sand so um, yeah the ability to put those things out there and and, you know it was a a nice thing to be able to do and to get the response that it got speaking of politics and soccer we're we're seeing sort of uh, a bit of a shift change where some of the, especially in the women's team, uh, the players are really standing up for themselves and for what they believe in, in this case, equal pay. Um, and as much as a lot was sort of, the fanfare was made over what Carlos Cordero said um, at the parade. Megan Rapinoe? Uh, yeah, <laughs> Rapinoe, you know? He's like, give it up for Alex Morgano. <laughs> well, you go, we're so close, dude. Um, what, you know, all of a sudden, you know, news breaks that they've hired two lobbyist groups or firms to convince lawmakers or, or politicians that no, 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 they've been getting paid even more than you think. Um, how does that, how does that come across uh, to you? And how does that come across to, how do you get that out to the fans without sort of being like, what the hell? Cause we could go, what the, you know? <laughs> I mean, tone deaf is the word I would use. And that's yeah. the word I have used. I mean, I don't think us soccer understands the public and and the people that in Washington they were speaking to, the lawmakers, even presidential candidates, they hired these lobbyists to speak to, who their response was, maybe you should save the money that you're using to hire these lobbyists and pay the players. Yeah. Yeah, which is so obvious. Even the lawmakers, <laughs> the people you paid someone like, to convince are like, what are you doing? I don't want your money. Yeah, <laughs> this is stupid. Yeah, yeah. Washington is totally dysfunctional, but even they get it. You know? yeah. <laughs> this is too corrupt for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, mean, I have some standards. 
You know, they're just a body in a, in a rolled up rug leaving behind that person. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you view these things, like, are, you know, do you want to go back to those segments and be like, all right, we got one for you? You know, do you want to be able to sort of uh, take these moments to just be like, yeah, I want to smack some of these people around just verbally, you know? I mean, I would have loved to have heard, like, gotten audio of, like, the lobbyist trying to convince. Oh, that would you know, Kamala Harris or something <laughs> like, oh, yeah, actually, yeah, we pay the women more than the guys, you know, and like what her response or her people's response would have been. But, um, yeah, it, it's that part of it just is tone deaf. But isn't isn't it? You know, I hear U.S. soccer is a nonprofit and it, it is it, the, the mission statement is to help grow the game and make it the most popular sport in the country. Uh, but when you see decisions like these, it's like, well. Why leave? Why deviate from that message? Uh, other and then and so it's easy to just kind of accuse them of being like uh, selfish or thinking of only of themselves. I mean, the biggest question for me is like Cindy Parlo Cohn, former World Cup winner, is currently the vice president of U.S. Soccer. What does she think about how this equal pay discussion is going and how U.S. soccer is handling it? What did the members she actually, of? I have a quote from her. She says, "Shit, I don't care. I got my money." <laughs> so that's. <laughs> I thought that was amazing that she... That's a quote. <laughs> right it on my screen. It's on my screen. You it can't was, see it, it's on my screen. You typed it in Microsoft Word. Yeah, I know. It's, Not a red line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what, what, what does the Athlete Council, which actually provided the winning margin for Carlos Cordero to become the U.S. Soccer President, what are these Athlete Council members who include, like, Alex Morgan now, Landon Donovan, what do they all think about how Cordero and U.S. Soccer are handling this? Yeah, why is it why is it so vague though? Of like, there's no transparency whatsoever. <laughs> there really isn't. Um, Other than this quote, I mean, <laughs> we don't get anything that's official. Incredible and that Cindy was official. so <laughs> so sincere. <laughs> it's very open. Everyone else, a little tight. But why? Grant official word. <laughs> it's just, but I mean, you you must uh, get frustrated from time to time with just be seeing how um, unclear some of these decisions are. We, w when I had never watched a, um, a U.S. soccer president uh, election. I, we were riveted. We, I was I'm watching it, and I'm, I, I was like live tweeting it, and I'm like, how come nobody else is enthralled like yeah. I am? This is, <laughs> it's a soap it, opera. Why did the Athletes Council, you know, we, we had spoken to like Carl Martino, and he, he was, you know, he wasn't d direct about like uh, wh why he was running. He was like, you know, there, there are some people, some former players that I won't never to, talk any, to again yeah. anymore. And clearly, you know something happened but nobody wants to talk about no, Grant's it Grant's eyes just made a move where I know he knows who he's talking about <laughs> I, I do know where some of the oh, bodies are buried um, oh, I mean in covering let's that get some shots for Grant <laughs> this, this actually was I when the U.S. failed to qualify for the World Cup that was a gigantic story obviously one of the biggest stories in the history of U.S. soccer and then when you had eight candidates for U.S. soccer president I decided, like, look, I'm going to try and cover this as well as I can. I'm going to, on my podcast, it tried to interview every single candidate. I ended up getting everyone except Hope Solo, unfortunately, but I got everyone else. Um, and I'm going to do stories to try and get a sense of what is actually happening behind the scenes here. And one thing that was kind of nice, or not, for me at least, I think as a journalist, a working journalist, was every one of those candidates was upset with me at some point in the campaign and yet seven of the eight still did the podcast interview and it was just new to me as well i'd never covered a u.s soccer presidential election right, before right. much less one with eight candidates and yeah. so uh to see some of the things that were happening uh behind the scenes as people like sunil gulati were trying to get people who had supported him in the past to support kathy carter uh, I remember, you know, interviewing this head of a New York State Youth uh, Soccer Association, yeah, yeah. this old older dude, who said he was going to support Kathy Carter, but he called her the girl eleven times in the interview and didn't mention her name even Which once. Is progressive for New Jersey. <laughs> That's not, let's not take away. <laughs> and I still feel like Catherine Carter was a bit of a Manchurian candidate, okay? Trying to get our eyes, uh, you know, averted while Carlos Cordero came in and just, uh, you know, stole the position. But clearly there's a lot to cover there. We could go over that another wow. time, maybe over drinks. That was a, that was a bold, that was a big statement. You said yeah, a lot buddy, of things. It was a hell of a sentence. <laughs> By the way, guys, Julie Stewart-Binks has a show that's also on this channel. That's right. I had I, no I noticed that they're allowing them to drink on one of the shows. Where are the drinks here? 
Yeah, ours, uh, we'll, we'll do it. We're going to bring out some, uh, you know, some Latino drinks. <laughs> some uh, Coquito. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, some also, Alexis is already drunk. Yeah, right? yeah dude, wait. I'm, you haven't been drinking this whole time, Grant? <laughs> haven't you noticed? Wow. Yeah. You know, when Julie starts her show, she's like, what happened to all the drinks? I'm like, hey, yeah, what happened to them? Yeah, I thought that was more. Uh, when, when the Clearly, look, American soccer is changing. There's so many things that are happening. Transparency is starting to become a bit more... MLS is also sort of now in this mode where it really can't keep hold of all of the, you know, the secrets it used to. Like a lot of this stuff is coming out. It just seems like we're, we're in a rush of expansion. Like, where do you think this ends? Do you think we're going to go to 34? Do you think it's ever going to be two different leagues? I mean, I think you've heard actually on occasion some of the owners in the league say they could see it being as big as, as 40 teams. If that were the case, then that's two leagues. That's like an MLS one and an MLS two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, potentially with like uh, you know movement in between those leagues. Ooh, so the that... word movement. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 promotion Keeps and rolls away. <laughs> huh? All the tinfoil hats <laughs> on here. We said movement. <laughs> He's one of us. <laughs> one of... <laughs> That was your little QAnon thing. You gave him a little, a little. But I mean, like, also too, I don't think the league wants to say that necessarily publicly because they want to keep people thinking who are bidding for these teams that this could stop at thirty. Um, I just don't see that. Money. Yeah, I just don't see that happening though. I no. mean, as, as long as you're getting two hundred million dollars is the current expansion fee price, which is crazy compared to like in two thousand seven, it was like ten million dollars yeah. or something like that. What yeah. about what about single entity? Do you think that structure? Starts to fall apart. It seems like this CBA is going to be chipping away at it even more than free agency did. Given, given that oh, some owners do want to spend more money. Yeah. I mean, I just don't necessarily see single entity going away, though I could see the salary cap like going much, much higher. I certainly hope that's the case. Yeah. I don't think maybe this CBA cycle we're going to see a huge jump. But, I mean, if we all want to see MLS – someday maybe within our lifetimes you guys are younger than me be like the best league in the world or one of the best leagues that salary cap's got to go a lot higher yeah yeah it's like i i I, it's like trying to figure out what mls should look like i mean what what we don't know when we started the show we did not think mls it's just four years and we didn't Mm -hmm. think mls would be where it it, is speaking of the expansion fees and this many teams uh and and it just seems like it is the 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 two league system will seems to make the most sense. I mean, it seems like uh, when we started the show, we did, we thought and we had gone to like press conferences and, and saw Don Garber speak at the at state of MLS and it, it, everything. Pro, it was just like stop with the. He, I think he wanted to smack journalists yeah. with all these right. questions about the future of, of promotion relegation. And now it seems like with the especially the addition. I, I well, feel they like they become a selling league. So, like now, like they, that happened, and that was four years ago. Would have never been admitted to. So, I feel like th- these walls are starting to crumble a little bit. Yeah, for me, the Ooh, big walls. thing. Yeah, you like get it. Rant. Um, <laughs> for me, the big thing is is that like there's been so much of a focus on money and financial issues, and not enough on the soccer in maybe the last yeah, several yeah. years. That like, okay, the money side, financial side seems to be doing much better for MLS. Let's make sure that the soccer side is is truly getting better too, and that. That applies to the national team, I think, as well. It's not just about the money. It's about being a good soccer country. How do we get there on the soccer side? And one thing people often suggest when it comes to raising the quality of the game is probably is adding diversity to uh, to American soccer, and not not necessarily in just the like who makes it into uh, um, you know an international squad or at the youth levels because it seems to be pretty diverse there but in coaching there seems to be a complete lack of uh, Latino coaches uh, black coaches US soccer they just have that sort of like uh, that big group and there was not one Latino male in the whole thing right I mean what what's going on do Christian and I have to now take on roles <laughs> we will <laughs> we will and it will become a very much a for-profit organization <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just think it's really unfortunate that Todd Ramos is the only Latino coach in U.S. soccer right now, and he's basically being pushed aside when it comes to uh, strategy on the youth side, uh, even though this is a guy who's gotten to three straight under-20 World Cup quarterfinals. Uh, I think it's unfortunate that Robin Fraser just got hired as the Colorado Rapids coach as the first uh, you know, black head coach uh, since Patrick Vieira, and the, and they are two of the only black head coaches we've seen in this league for years and years and years. So, I mean, it's it's a real issue. Um, I'd like to think that MLS and U.S. soccer were doing more to try and find minority coaches, head coaches. 
I don't feel like they really are. Uh, and I want soccer in this country to reflect what this country is. Yeah. So give us jobs, dude. <laughs> yeah, Grant, give us jobs. <laughs> where, could, where, could, where could the fans follow you? Where could they see your stuff? Because you're all over the place. Yeah, I'm on Twitter at Grant Wall, um, but also uh, for Sports Illustrated. Uh, I host a weekly video show called Planet Football. We've done 85 episodes. It's free now. It's not behind the paywall. So we get good guests. We uh, This week we'll have uh, Jesse Marsh coming on Look to talk that. about not our days in college, <laughs> but about coaching in the Champions League. <laughs> Is it all cleared up? Up down there? <laughs> Glad we sorted that out. Yeah, you know, and we're getting, uh, we're really enjoying it. My co-host is Luis Miguel Echegaray, and and it's something that uh, has been a lot of fun. I host a weekly podcast, Planet Football Podcast. I do a lot of writing. Um, I even start another book project soon. Damn, so much. Well, we'll be right back with more after. Well, thank you, Grant Wall, for joining. Thanks for having me, first guest on our show. Thank you so much. Absolute honor. I would shake your hand, but uh, well, I'll shake it for you. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, we had a guest on. Uh. So, uh, Grant, again, um, uh, Grant's book, uh, Masters of Modern Soccer, make sure you pick it up. I'm sure you can pick it up everywhere. Books are Wherever sold. Fine books are sold. Okay, yeah. so may, uh, make sure you do that. So this is this has been our the wrap-up of our second show. Second show ever. With our first guest, Grant, an absolute honor. This, uh, How do you feel, Alexis? I feel comfortable. I feel like maybe you set up a couple cots, maybe. You know, I could just live in this studio. This would be nice. Okay. You know, Julie comes on, I awake a little. <laughs> Take a little shot, go back. I think Alexis is trying to plan things for when his wife kicks him out. <laughs> yeah, always happening. Soon. Yeah, she's already sizing up the window to see what of mine she could throw out. Uh, but this has been an absolute blast. Uh, why don't we go ahead? Why don't we get Grant in on the exit? Huh? Yeah, that will, will be nice. Yeah. Make sure that. Okay, so uh, with that said, for Grant Wall, my name is Christian Polanco. I'm Alexis Guerreros, and together, what are we? The Cooligans! Ah!